All right, Fredericton, you are back for another episode of the Integrity Minute. I'm Louis Vandervoff, your host, and I am joined today by Jeremy Demerchant, and this show is sponsored by Integrity, Junk Removal, and Demolition. So Jeremy, I appreciate having you here, and uh, if you could just tell us in, you know, in a, a couple minutes who you are, what you do, and, and we'll get rolling. Yeah, so um, I, I used to say I was born in Fredericton and couldn't get out if I tried. Um, I got out once, I went to Ottawa for about a minute. Uh, but my name is Jeremy Demerchant. I run a company called Permission to Sell Consulting Group, and we specialize in helping people uh, double their sales in 12 months or less by helping grow or turn around their sales team. I love it. That's very concise. And and uh, full disclosure, I have gone through one of your programs, and uh, and Jeremy, Jeremy, what he does works. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, that that's how we initially connected. So. Right. Um, and you work with you work with companies all over, right? Not just Fredericton. That's right. Yeah. Um, the the majority of my clients actually are outside of New Brunswick, uh, but I just see so much, so many companies that I could support here. But because of social media, it's actually easier to reach companies outside, which is interesting because I I love networking and I think there's a huge opportunity uh, for me to support companies right in my own backyard. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. That, that segues well into, you know, what is your favorite part about working with businesses? You know, I, I think the beauty of it for me is I get to help somebody grow their vision. They've got something that they want to create some, the reason why they started their business. And it's almost never because they love sales. They've, there's something behind that. And so when I can come in and, and help, you know, either turn around a sales team or help them grow their sales team, for me, that's me kind of putting my stamp on the impact that they're about to have. And for me, that's what it's all about. I love it. I love it. You know, ultimately more sales is, uh, is more business and, and more growth, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so you mentioned you, you can get away from Fredericton, you're back here again. And I, I think, <laughs> uh, you know, for, for the foreseeable future, I think uh, based on our chats. Yes. Yes. But uh, what's your, what do you think is, you know, one or, or two of the best kept secrets here in the Fredericton area? Um, well, I'm, I'm sad that the, uh, the ale house is now gone. I'll just bring up the sadness because that was my favorite restaurant, but I will tell you this. Um, I think my favorite lunch place in the city is the palette. It's phenomenal. Um, I did just enjoy my first year anniversary at Brewbakers, which has been here in different forms forever, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically a staple in the Fredericton community. And the other part is, I think that there is a segment of the population that has not had a chance to experience what I would say is a pretty low key disconnected level of fun. And I mean, that in a positive way, um, which is the board game cafe um, unplugged it's called, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, sometimes it's just, it's nice to go in, turn the phones off and play a board game with your friends or family. And I think it's just underappreciated. So shout out for, for Travis and the crew at unplugged. I love it. I love it. I, so is that a requirement? I've never been. Um, I, I've heard the concept. It's, 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 not, it's not a requirement, but I mean, uh, like they serve food and you could just go in there to socialize, but I think most people just go in to play the games. Yeah. And so my wife and I have gone in a couple of times. We pick a game off the shelf. We order some food. Um, we're not required to turn the phones off, but we try to, we're like, okay, we're unplugging. We're in unplugged. Maybe we yeah. should just shut yeah. the phones off. And um, it's not always successful as far as keeping the phones turned off, but it's just nice to not be in front of a TV. Like how, how much of our day do we spend in front of screens? All of it. I'm in front of two screens right now. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'll be here for the majority of the day, like to be able to disconnect and just let your body almost recover from all that it goes through staring at screens, I think is, is great. And I found it to be more relaxed and more recovered the next day if I'm just chilling out playing board games. I love it. I love it. That got real deep real fast. <laughs> right. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and so, you know, with, with your, working with businesses, not just in the Fredericton area, um, but what, what advice would you share with companies here in Fredericton, you know, and, and all over really anybody who's listening when it comes to networking and referrals? I think the biggest thing, and I, this is where I say, do as I say, not as I do, because this is still something that I'm working on getting better at. But one thing I do try to prioritize is whenever I have a, a new relationship, I meet somebody new. My first question after I learn about them is what can I do to help you? And like sincerely, because I, I'm in a place where I just want to help people grow. It happens to be a business model that can generate revenue for me, which is why I can build my team. 
but at its core, it's how can I help somebody? And I'm not going to be the solution for everybody, but I want to make those connections. And so whether it's local or someone I meet online, I'll ask, even after like I interview on, on someone on my podcast, I'll say, what introductions can I make for you? What can I do to support you? Where, you know, can I promote something of yours or, or whatever? And I think that with that being the goal in, in the start of a relationship creates a much better relationship. And far too often we get into networking groups. I love networking events, the chamber, things like that. But sometimes we go in looking for the transaction. Hey, can I have your card? Hey, here's my card. Like, I mean, just what can I get out of you? Yeah, exactly. Let me call you. Hey, let's talk about how I can help you. Well, in that context, it's usually how can I sell you something to make money? Um, and hopefully it'll help you. Yeah. And not that we do that intentionally, it's just the design. And if we lead with, hey, like truly, how can I support you? And it forces someone to think, and not, not, hey, can I help you? But how can I help you? It forces someone to think about what all the options are. And then sometimes I will say, any connections that you'd like to, you know, any, anyone or any person in a specific industry you'd like to meet, um, any introduction, you know, things like that, I, I think allow you to create a sincere relationship based on wanting to support somebody and in the long term it's proven very very valuable to me because typically within 12 months of a relationship like that some kind of business comes back my way because that's not my priority it's I, I want someone to go you know what that Jeremy guy he's the guy to come to when you need that your sales team turned around I've never worked with him directly but the conversations that we have had he just seems like a really great guy and really wants to help like that's you know, you can call it selfish or selfless. You can look at it either way. I don't care, <laughs> but it, it, it just works. Right. Cause yeah. I want my, my goal, the selfish goal in networking is when someone says, Hey, I need help with my sales team. Who do I talk to? I want my name to be the only one in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. So and, I mean, and by but, but, the, the way to do that is to provide value for people. I exactly. It's gotta be relationship first. Totally. I love that. That's, that's a nugget right there. Hope everyone was taking notes. <laughs> awesome. Um, what, uh, you know, other business owners like yourself in the Fredericton area should we have on this podcast? You know, people that come to mind. You know, I was thinking about this before the show and there's lots of great business owners. Like I, I encourage you to interview people that are true pillars in the community, um, like Doug, the owner of Brewbakers, um, the, the people that have owned restaurants or buildings and businesses that have been here just for, for years, because I'm sure the insight they would share would be mind blowing. Um, but I also know that there's a mutual friend of ours who just moved to Fredericton okay. from Moncton, a um, uh, little known name, uh, Mark Mowinney. And uh, he moved here from Moncton and now he's a Fredertonian. So he should definitely be on the show. He's someone that started his business almost the exact same time as I did. He was kind enough to have me one, be one of the first, I think, four or five guests on his show, Natural Born Coaches, which has hundreds of episodes out now. And he's just, just the exposures he's allowed me to have on his show has generated a lot of business for me. Uh, so I'll give him the, the shameless shout out here because I, I just a great guy specializes in helping coaches build their business. And now he's a Fredertonian. I love it. I love it. I'll reach out to them. I'll, I'll ask you for an intro to uh, Doug as well. Yeah, for sure. Good stuff. And to wrap it up, this is uh, extra applicable to you because you are in sales, but mm -hmm. uh, Talk about your first sale or a memorable sale that you've had over the years. Oh, um, well, so my first sale, I still, so I grew up on, uh, you know, watching uh, Scrooge McDuck and his, you know, his first uh, silver dollar that he's got or whatever it is. And in my wallet right now, I carry what I call the first dollar I ever made consulting. Um, now, it was a gentleman that I met through Toastmasters. And he said, Hey, you're in sales. I need some copyright copywriting done for my website. And I was like, I don't, I don't do copywriting. He said, isn't copywriting just having a sales conversation on paper. And isn't that what you do? And I'm like, I guess so. And he said, okay, how much would you charge me? I had no idea what I was doing. And so I just, I don't, I hundred bucks, I guess. So he gave me a hundred dollar bill and I did the copy for his site. But when I took that hundred dollars to the bank, I said to the banker, I said, I want this broken down. I want a dollar out of it. And that dollar, that loony is still in my wallet today. And I believe that's, that happened in 2013, 2013 or 2014. This that's is cool. what I consider my first consulting yeah, dollar yeah. made. Yeah. 
the first the first um sales copy you wrote too yeah yeah it is i had no idea what i was doing i was like you sure you want me to do this so i um, love it yeah it's interesting that's a cool story that's a cool story well jeremy appreciate having you on here and uh yeah any any last words you want to leave with your fellow Fredericonians here uh guys i mean i'm gonna shamelessly do this for lewis um, but i i want you guys to reach out to integrity junk removal and demolition because lewis and uh those guys over there are total rock stars so they're sponsoring the show and lewis just rocks everything he touches i'm super honored to have him going through my program he's definitely one of the success stories of people that i've worked with and lewis just thanks for everything that you're doing for the businesses you're supporting for the community you're supporting i think it's just phenomenal so thank you Awesome, Jeremy. Well, I can't, uh, I can't really take it any further than that. So guys, this has been another episode of the Integrity Minute. Appreciate you, Jeremy.